presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great week, folks. Love coming out of you makes you happy. The whole world can love you, but that is not the love that will make you happy. What will make you happy is to share all the love you have inside of you. That is the love that will make the difference. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 47, NASDAQ down 17, SPs off one and a half, gold contract down $20.80 trading at 2005 an ounce. We have silver down 11 cents, $24.98 an ounce, late sweet crude off 95 cents, $79.76 a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10 year note down nine ticks, trading 115.16, the 30 year up 18 at 132.17, and King Dollar. King Dollar up 481 ticks, trading at 102.573, Euros at 108, Yens at 133, and the British Pound is at 123 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, bottom line, folks, last Thursday, you got the rejection of lower price. You had lighter volume. That's saying that this market wants higher price. And we'll see, you know, how this reacts coming up to this swing. And so we have out here, you know, on Friday, on last Thursday, rather, you went, you get down to a price point of that 405. You were coming into volume of 130, 112 million. You did 63. Today, you're doing the same thing. You know, you get an inside day today, but you're doing the same thing. You get down to 405.97. You know, you're not holding, yeah, you're holding that level. If you, if you look at the, the SPY, you know, the SPY can pull back a bit, but I'm talking about a few points. That we could be down eight points or something. But once we got that pop um, a little bit earlier in the day, right here, this pop right here, I mean, that's to me, 4.122. So yeah, well, 4.122 it can pull back to. You know, right there's, right there's the number. But that's not gonna change the complex of going higher. All that's gonna do is that, yeah, coming into the close, they take some bread, that's it. NDX 100, same type of setup inside the NDX. We take a look at the NDX, what we have at the NDX out here. And you know, bank earnings start Friday, so that's, maybe they're just waiting for that. But bottom line, inside the queues, what we had, the queues were coming into 75 million shares. We did 46 and rejected 312. And we have an inside day in the queues, so that doesn't mean much, but that's also telling me. Now, the queues get interesting because the, the queues, I mean, I think it's 334, the number we're looking at. Yeah, it's 334. I mean, that's the number it's going after. So I suspect it's going to hit it, too, because what you have here, on the other side, when we came off the highs at 334, that's the highest volume bar on the way down, folks, okay? 334.15 is the low of that bar. And, you know, when you have counter trend bounces, bottom line, you know, they like to go to it, so we'll see how that shakes out. We go to the gold contract. Gold contract's turning into a, con a complex ABC structure up. And what complex means, folks, is this, is it means that you took out the B point, you took it out with volume, which gives you the price projection. Price projection is 2154. Now you back down under the B. Now, as long as you back down under the B with light volume, it's no big deal. And that's what we're doing. You're backing down under the B. So the B point is 2031. 
Well, we're at 2005, but you're backing down. When we took out that B point, the bottom line, we took that B point out with 213, 233,000. You're only backing down with 129. We go to the dollar, we take a look at, well, no. Next, I want to go to the notes and bonds because the note and bond market's going to move this market again. And what's happening with the note and bond market, it looks to me like we're setting up a very large ABC structure on the way up. We'll see how large it is. In, in the, but even if we just come back down to the last swing area, which is on the 10, is about 114.07, or the one below that at 113. Either one of those still sets up a very large ABC structure on the way up. And both of those are approximately, well, one's a, just over a 0.382, the other's a 50. You're backing down with tremendously light of volume. You're talking about volume wise here on the 10. Yeah, it's a joke, actually. You're backing down with uh, 704,000 contracts going into 1.5 million. And then if we get over into the ND, I mean, to the dollar, this is the wild card out here. The dollar. You know, bottom line, couldn't make it to 106 or 107 last time. And all of that 106 and 107 is, is a 0 0.382 of the leg down. And bottom line, it gave it up at the 103 and a half. Uh, now, it saved itself right where the strength was. The strength in the dollar came off the lows at that 101,546. We made it to 101,415 and rejected lower price. So... Uh, we'll see once again, you know, if in fact we can see that dollar go up to that 106 or 107. But my take is that we're going to do it. We take a look at some why, because the bottom line is that it's a great trading market. And when a great trading market, you're going to be bouncing back and forth very quickly inside of the indices, inside of the bond market, inside of the currency market. So we take a look at some of the higher volume equities here. Well, first, we'll go inside the NDX 100. What you have inside the NDX is that... Micron Tech's up 7.5%, AMD's up 3.5%, uh, Lamb Research's up 35 Taken away from it, JD.com's off 2, Apple's off 1.86, Google's off 1.8. Inside of the Dow Industrials, the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. Point-wise here, you get Caterpillar putting that 39 positive points, Home Depot 19, American Fresh 12. Taken away from it, Apple only 20, give me a break. Microsoft uh, 17, you got Amgen 15. That's not a lot of selling, man. That's the bottom line, folks. And, <laughs> and when you look at the headlines on it, it was pretty wild. And yes, there's no doubt Apple makes all their money with uh, the iPhones, but they sell a lot of Macintosh computers, too. And 40% cut in any type of uh, business you're in <laughs> is pretty intense, man. There's no doubt about that. Dow, Dow Industrials right now, let's, let's just see like how this is set up. Actually, I want IWM. Let's go look at that IWM for a second. IWM. We take a look at the IWM. Okay, so. Yeah, that one was higher price too. I mean, it, you know, it broke the lower consolidation, but once it got back on the other side of it, which is 170, it's saying, hey, this will have to build cars, but that looks to me like... You know, these higher swing points, and the IWM, I don't think they got higher swing points there. It'll commit to some flack, but the indices, that highest swing point is there. Stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back with I'm Amistad Steve Rhodes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC. Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 45. The Nasdaq is down 19. S&Ps are off, too. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You go to the newsletters. You'll see it on the right-hand side. You can subscribe to Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%, and one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, as well as a huge amount of information that Steve has as soon as you get that letter. So come over to our website at TFNN, hit that button, and you are off to the races. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? How about that John Rom guy? Amazing. He's he's on a tear, man. He's on a tear. Yeah. Yeah, just like just like Scotty Schefter was last year, it seems like Rom is doing that exact same thing. Yes. But you know what a what a fantastic um, Masters tournament it was uh, for 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 me. Uh, you know, and 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 our weather's just a, a tad different yours yours and mine. Right. But we I, we haven't had rain down here. I can't remember when we had a bad weather day recently. Okay. Uh, over the last couple months, this Sunday, yesterday, it was a terrible weather day here. So it was perfect for being able to get up early, watch the finish of the third round, and then watch the uh, watch the uh, last round uh, yesterday. But yeah. you know, amazing that Tiger uh, tied the record now for the most number of cuts made out there. So that was pretty cool. The temperatures. The, the the weather that those guys played in that was, was extraordinary heavy. it's so cool that it turned around uh, you know that they could finish it because if you yeah. had saw it folks okay trees are coming down i mean that was hard to comprehend there's those two trees coming down it's like whoa man big, yeah. yeah big 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 trees but it's a Huge. great tournament uh, yeah. I, I loved uh, Phil. How about Phil and yeah. uh, and Jordan Spieth? I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if they broke a record for a, two, you know, uh, uh, for their under par uh, between the two uh, between the two of them in, you know, for one group. I, I've got to guess that they did. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, I mean, Phil's like. Uh, you know he he's broken some records and finished number two. Yeah, like, you know, sure. almost one thing. So great tournament. Hey, what I thought we would do today is something just a tad different. Okay. Than than what I've done in the past here in providing information, really just to give people what I'd call something to think about. So the whole purpose of today's presentation is to throw out some information yeah. and have people think about it. And and really the end goal here, with regard to any conclusions that we might draw here, is that. Uh, 
if well, we'll just let this uh, we'll let this presentation uh, take us down that path out here. But I think the, the 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 what I'm really trying to also say though is this has some longer term implications, especially for those of us that are managing long term type money. Oftentimes when we're talking and we're we're you know we're dealing with shorter term type trades out there. So the question is: Is the Federal Reserve raising? interest rates to stem inflation, which is what we all believe is going on. That's certainly the words coming out of Chair Powell's mouth. It's my belief, and I know it's your belief as well, that actions speak way louder than words. So let's go take a look at the actions of the Federal Reserve. And what I did, Tom, and everybody can they can do the same thing. They can search the Internet. And they'll find out the same information. So the first thing I, I went uh, to do is to find out what was the first time in some type of a statement that Powell used the word transitory. Turns out it was March 20th, 2019. So what I have up here on this uh, top row is I've got all of the uh, Fed meetings in 2019 and whatever rate decisions they would have made. So we had six uh, meetings uh, ever since that March 20th statement of uh, transitory. If we take a look at all of 2020 out here. So there were eight different meetings that took place between January of 2020 to December 16th of 2020. No rate increases out there. Now, if we take a look at this very bottom panel here Tom yes this is from the uh, this is from the Bureau of Information Statistics so everybody can grab this exact same uh, date out here and at least it provides for us the inflation rate uh, also by year so we can start taking a look at uh, from the time period that he used the word transitory to then we get into 2021 and in 2021, it's very clear here. We take a look at this bottom panel that rates were that in, that uh, inflation was really on the rise. We got you know we got well above the two percent level by April. It never backed down. And so these highlighted areas, here, you'll see all of 2021. Also, no rate increases. Why no rate increases when it was very clear that it wasn't transitory, that rates were going up. And in fact, we didn't see rates rise. The first time that rates rose out here was March 16, 2022. That was like some 15 days after Russia invaded Ukraine. So we have we, we have clear inflation moving higher. The Fed doesn't take any action until Russia invades Ukraine. Why is that? Why is that just a coincidence out here? So just to summarize this, Jerome yeah. Powell first uses the word transitory, March 2019. Rates are left at zero from 2019 all of 2020. March 21, inflation prints at 2.6 percent, followed by 4.2 and continues to rise. Powell still takes no action. Russia invades Ukraine February 24th. And at the very next FOMC meeting, March 16th, just less than three weeks since that invasion, the Fed begins raising interest rates. And I don't believe that's a coincidence. And the only reason I don't believe that's a coincidence is because I've gone back and I've done some of the homework. Here's some of the homework. If we take a look on April 2nd, 1917, that's when uh, Woodrow Wilson asked Congress to declare war on Germany. So all we have to do is go back to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. We can grab this data. We can take a look at inflation rates. In this case here, I'm using the Consumer Price Index. And the arrow marks the beginning of when the uh, U.S. entered um, World War One, And what we can see is inflation rose, continued to rise. It really, World War One began before the U.S. got involved. It actually took place in 2014. We can see that uh, inflation began rising into the in, in the United States. So that's World War One. Now let's take a look at this chart here. So just to kind of bring it home, summarize it a little bit clearer, here we've got the inflation rates. Um, and so I go back to 1915. We can see World War One inflation moving higher. We take a look at World War Two inflation moving higher. We take a look at Vietnam War, inflation moving higher. Now we get to the Russia-Ukraine War, and inflation is moving higher. So in one sense, we can say, yeah, Powell was raising interest rates to stem off inflation because he knew what really I didn't know until I started to do the work on this was that during our war times, we've got inflation that starts moving higher. So in one sense, you could technically say, yeah, that's why he was raising rates. But he's not giving us the impression that he's raising rates because of a war an impending war that's coming. So I believe he was really trying to get out front. And I don't believe, maybe maybe we start to see some little bit of a pause here. But if, in fact, we are really headed into World War III, I believe that rates continue to rise. So sometimes it's maybe not what he's saying. Maybe it's what he's not saying. Now, of course, folks might be sitting back and say, well, what's that mean to me? And I do think if, if this, in fact, if this conclusion, if we go down this path and say, OK, that's logical. Well, I, what I also did here is I produced the uh, charts here during World War One just so we could get a feel. So I can only go I can't go back to the exact dates, 
but I can go back to the years here uh, with this tool from Seasonic. So if we just take a look at 1914 to 1918, people will see how the Dow traded. If we take a look at World War II, we can see how the Dow traded. If we take a look at uh, Vietnam, we can see how the Dow traded. I don't want people to think that the markets are just going to move to the downside out there, but I think that there is long-term planning that we might need to consider, and I believe that Powell's raising rates, not just to fend off the supply chain inflation, but more so driven by the war based upon the past history. So it's, something to think about. Yeah, no, listen, it is. I mean, the, the Afghan war is not in there, but, you know, the Afghan war wasn't using as much munitions either. I mean, I'm quite familiar. Yeah, there's there's, 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 there's a deal there. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And yeah. folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. Going to go into newsletters to see the master and probability right on that right stand side. Check it out. There's a huge amount of great information. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 28. You get the Nasdaq down 25. S&Ps are off uh, four and a half. Let's go take a look at that oil market over here. So let's see what we got here active contract so you're flat we had that big pop last week it's kind of laying there now see the more that this lays here folks the higher the probability this gap's going to get filled sooner rather than later and that gap is 75 bucks man so it's like okay what's going to make it pop that gap because it hasn't been able to take out the swing which was just slightly higher you know we got up to a price point of the uh, 8181 but yet the swing is 81 83.04, you know, so, hey, we'll see where this baby shakes out. If we go to the XLE, we take a look at the XLE out here today. XLE, okay, this is this is a negative for the XLE right now. So what the XLE is doing is this. You can see, this is just the opposite of what the market's doing. See, see how, 
if you know the XLE the first day that you know the oil went up five dollars, it had a price jump big time, and it, it closed the night before at uh, eighty three sixteen. Opened the next day up at eighty seven, yeah, eighty seven fourteen. Now see what happened today. You got a huge contraction of volume. You're going, you're going into twenty four million as well as thirty one million. You had a contraction of volume of eleven, and you gave it up on price. So that's saying that the XLE is going to go fill this gap. You know, and this that that's that's okay. You 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 actually want the gap filled sooner rather than later because you're only a few points down. I mean, the gap there is only uh, eighty three, and you're at eighty five seventy one. Because if you go to ninety and then you're just laying out there, it's like okay, you know. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to get filled immediately, but they love getting filled. So it's a better situation when you get filled at the beginning versus the end. Let's go take a look at the silver market out here. So the silver market, you know, it's been strong, but it, it you know, bottom line, it's teetering. At the, well, first off, it did, the, the gold and silver market, the XAU, the HUI, they all did 100% move of a move, including silver, folks. And what 100% move of a move is, is if we take a look at silver, you go back to December, uh, bottom line, silver's at 2494. You get all the way down to 1990. You get all the way back to 2510. That's 100% move of the move. When you do 100% move of a move, bottom line, you're gonna, well, if, and this is a move up, you're gonna back down. And the cool thing about the back down, though, on this is that there was so much strength on the way up. More than likely, you'll back down with lighter volume, and what you're actually doing is setting up an ABC structure on the way up. So if I take a look at this and I put the generic silver on it, let's see how this shakes out. Okay, so you're right at the top of the range. Yeah, actually, you're over this range. So even to back down, the next, the next run up here, I suspect there's going to be this... Uh, yeah, it's 28, 30 bucks. That's how that's how this thing is lining up right now. 28 to 30 dollars. We got to take a look at uh, Microsoft, which is no doubt been one of the strongest equities in the NDX 100. Still hanging there, man. Look at this. It's that's hanging up there. It's hanging up there big. We go take. We pull this back. You know, you're down off the high of 349 or 288. That being said, if we go from that March level. Yeah, Jeez, it's amazing some, what some of these did. So the March 2020 level, the pandemic low, um, bottom line, it did a 0.618 retracement, folks. So remember something when you, well, yeah, no, first to remember this. See last month, that's monster volume, folks. This this one's higher price, man. You know, let's see, 276, so we're through 270, this one's higher price. This, that bar is huge. See that monthly bar? That's a big number. That monthly bar, 748 million, going into 477, even going to 647, and then 900's the biggest one, but it's already digging into that bar. The bottom of that bar is 276, you're at 288. That's impressive, man. That's impressive. Now, that's, that's saying it's not gonna break its high in the way up, but just getting to its high enough would be pretty impressive. Google, we go take a look at Google. Google caught a bid at the end of last week, and Google's been a dog. Yeah, this is hanging here. You can see last Thursday, uh, bottom line, Google, you know, shot up to this uh, 109.63. Last high there was 108.52. It's going to need a little bit more volume, but that's what building cause is all about. So going sideways will build cause. Or back, or sideways or lower. What ends up happening, you know, you can actually find out more about equities on the counter trend move to see how they move. We take a look at Google. We put this on a monthly. And what you're going to see, this looks like more than 0.618 to me, but no, it's just barely, just barely more than 0.618 uh, of the March lows. Uh, and, and in Google's case now this is this is where it gets really intriguing in google's case you can see both months you know people were buying this now evidently people were selling it also because the stock was so weak but when you take a look at this in the aftermath the bottom line is that that's a pushing to a higher price with higher volume and then yeah i mean 124 or 104.
Okay, so let's go to some of the banks. Who's going to kick us off here? Let's see what happens here. You got the 18th. We're at the 10th, so it's not uh, Bank of America. Either that or that's when they start. Bank of America is the 18th. There we go. 14th, Citigroup. Okay, where's J.P. Morgan? J.P.M. Okay, good. J.P. Morgan. Let's do J.P. Morgan. So the low is 101, the high is 144. They are going to be looking. The 14th is going to be Friday, right? A Thursday. It's the 10th, right? Yeah. So they're going to be looking to bring $37 billion to the, to the top line and $3.39 to the bottom line. Let's see what we have here. Put this on a weekly. Yeah, this looks to me that, you know, no matter what they come out and say, this we'll just wants lower price. So there's, there's, there is like a lot of divergence in this marketplace, man. Um, that's a high volume low, though, from four weeks ago when that banking crisis was out there. It's still a high volume low. You can see when it went sideways. Hasn't, hasn't got hit yet. That... The, the low prior to that's a high volume low at 10120. So that could be game also. So we'll see where they shake out. But that's so that's JP Morgan. Citigroup is gonna be coming out also. Citigroup, the low is for one year is 40, the high is 54. They're coming out the 14th in the morning. They're looking to do 19.9 billion to the top line, dollar sixty-seven to the bottom line. Same setup, exact same setup. You can see, makes sense too. You get a high volume low that's laying out here, at 4201. This one here is starting to reject price today. So you can see, you go, you're going up today with uh, what nine million, and you're going into. Look at that, you're going into 50 million with nine. That's not even close, folks. That's when things get really wild. You know, you get a big seller, you don't have enough buyers, you put, you're pushing up. Trying to hold price, can't hold price. Why can't you hold price? Because you have so many buyers on the other, sellers on the other side. Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading the, up 24, NASDAQ is down 23, S&P's off three and a half. Stay right there, folks, we'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial is up 45, NASDAQ's down 17, S&P's up one and a half. Let's go to our man John in Philly. John, what's going on, brother? Hello, Big Tom. How are you today? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good, thank you. Uh, we're, we're finally getting some uh, spring-like weather out here on the frozen tundra. That's a beautiful thing. After uh, after a long, long wait. Tom, I wanted to ask you about the E-mini S&Ps and actually the NASDAQ futures as well. Yes. Uh, just ob I observed this. Um, the highs were made last week uh, in the first half hour last Tuesday. Fell down into uh, the lows of the first half hour on Thursday. Uh, we bounced up strongly intraday all Thursday from those morning lows. This morning, we, uh, you know, made another low, essentially a little double bottom in the first hour and have spent the. Just like we did on Thursday. Yep. My question to you, sir, is do you see any evidence? Anything that would lead you to believe that this is making a lower high right here and that we then uh, trail off the rest of the week? I actually, I, I see a potential ABC up, John, the way this is trading, because of the way okay. that we went. We, we have volume on that spike. Well, for two different things. The, the, the Friday, the prior Friday is a sign of strength. So when you get a sign of strength, in the marketplace, you know, I pay attention to it. And, yep. you know, yep, that was true. wide price spread accelerated volume. Then the spike, you know, had volume in it. So it's like, okay, is this an ABC up? And if it's an ABC up in the futures, it's a 4330. And the next swing point up there is 42, what is it? 4244. Four, four. Yeah, I know it's bizarre. Trust me, I think it's bizarre too, but <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, man. Um, yeah, that's what it seems like, you know. So okay. we'll, yeah, we'll see how we... I appreciate how we, you just uh, doing that little bit of elaboration. That's all I needed to know. Yeah, no, we'll see particularly... Well, like Apple today, John, right? This is like pretty bizarre. I mean, you know, Apple, the, those numbers, you know, the, the uh, computer numbers come in this morning. And, you know, Apple's numbers are down 40% on computers. Like, yeah, I, I get it that, you know, they're iPhones, but... They sell plenty of computers, man. It's not like they don't. Well, in fact, let me explain. Let's see. So computers, we break this down. Watch this. Let's see. Revenue. No, I don't have it. Interesting. I thought they did. Yeah, anyway, but you get the gist of it. Like the way Apple was trading today, that kind of blew my mind. And that's saying that, you know what, they're still not selling. And it, listen, this can have all to do with that we're just going to be at a higher number and you actually won't be able to buy anymore. You know what I'm saying? That the higher mm -hmm. number, folks, yep. would be the aspect of um, inflation in general, okay? And bottom line, that happens, you know? I mean, that's, that's what happens, which is really bizarre, but, you know, it won't mean you're gonna be buying more stuff. You know, a dollar, you know, bottom line, as we know, won't be worth what a dollar could buy. And but yet, the higher number would be there, so. Very good. I appreciate your looks, uh, looks uh Thanks again, Tom. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Let's go to George in Tampa. Hey, George, what's going on? 
Houston in general. Okay. Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? <laughs> I'm doing great. How do you like the weather this morning? Oh, the weather is beautiful, my God. <laughs> Thinking it beyond belief, yeah. We're in heaven right now, folks. It's about 80 degrees with no humidity. It's like amazing, yeah. So, Diana like Shipping, right? Yes, I'd like to take a look at it and see your opinion on it. Let's take a look. The low is 336, the high is 671. Uh, next time that they come out with numbers is on May 24th. They're going to be looking to do 71 million to the top line and uh, 70, no, 22 cents to the bottom line. So let's see what we have here. I see. Okay. Yeah, I'd be careful here. It's coming right into that flack at that 190s, that, that 397. See, that, that downdraft was pretty intense. Let me pull this back a bit. One second. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to have to build cause for quite some time, George. Because of the way that yeah. came down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the way it came down, I realize that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, do you think it'll make it at least back up to that uh, 428 area? Or? It would be, it's going to be high. It's, it's hard to get into right where it is right now, actually, the 396. See, that, what happens when you get a large bar like that? The top of that bar is 479, the bottom is 496. When you get something like that, it's really hard just to even get into the 496. And you can see it's tried it five days so far, and it can't do it. And what okay. has also happened, just so you can understand, the shipping rates have gone down dramatically, you know. I mean, big time. You know, from the aspect of approximately, if I go back a year and a half, you're talking about $14,000 for a high-top con container, 40-foot high-top, to 3200 today. So okay, that's a, that's a yeah, big well, number. You know, so I'd be careful, man. You got time to look at one more quick Absolutely. one? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is an oil tanker. It's N-A-K. I mean, yep. Yep. N -A -E. I'm it. yep. Northern Dynasty. Oh, no. no. Say that again. It, N is in Nancy. Yeah. A-T. Thank you. Okay, so this here, you got the lows 180, the highs 467. Same number, man. Same deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at, at trying to get out that 50-day moving average. I thought at least get back up to there. Yeah. Just be careful when they break like this because what does happen is that the, you know, the, the tankers are always a boom and bust. I mean, last time it looked like they were never going to bust again, and they did. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like who would ever oh, think okay. that? You know, you could first uh, off. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, I man. Have it. a have a great one. Have a safe one. Dow Dow Industrials right now uh, just uh, it's up fifty nine. The Nasdaq is uh, down sixteen. S and P's are flat, and those tanker rates, folks. Okay, they move around like in an extraordinary way. So, you know, as a commodity, what ends up happening as they move around. You know, bottom line, right to the bottom line, it gets taken out. And, you know, what most of those companies do is that they suck all the money out when things are good, and then they never have any money when things are bad. And that's how it goes. And you see that that's how it goes with a lot of these companies, by the way, okay? We see these companies, if, if they kept money in, just like a country, if a country kept money in when, you know, and do inf infrastructure, there's a story about Bolivia. And, uh, you know, in the journal today and what it's, what it's all about, you know, they were a huge exporter of natural gas. You know, bottom line is that for a while it really worked well. Then all of a sudden they didn't put the infrastructure back in. And now the bottom line is that if you have U.S. dollars in Bolivia, you are the king of everything because they're running out of U.S. dollars. They're running out of euros because what they did is that they didn't keep putting the money back in and it, it has to do with you know what's really wild what i actually really learned more than anything especially building so many houses being involved with so many houses is this the reason that depreciation is whether it's a 21 percent 21 year depreciation or 20 or 30 year the bottom line is that you better keep fixing your house because the reality is that if you don't you are going to have a house that is basically not falling down but you're going to have trouble if you don't that's what depreciation is all about. You got to put money back in. 
and keep things up. Oh, you, uh, you're gonna run into trouble. Stay right there, folks, we'll come right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial is up 54. You got the Nasdaq down 18. S&Ps are off one and a half. So what we have here, folks, you're going to have another rejection of lower price. You're going to have lighter volume. Let's take a look at the indices uh, right now. So... Indice volume right now, you get uh, NYSEs at 460. So uh, this is going to be really light volume. We were at 800 on Thursday. This will probably do 750, which is amazing, by the way. Okay, that is really light volume. And what you have there is that you went to a well, you went to a low, not to a high. Inside of the composite, well, the composite is going to do more actually, because the composite is at 3.6. We did 3.8 on Friday, on Thursday rather. So if we take a look at the composite, it's still the same thing. It's going to be a rejection of lower price, and it's an inside day. Yeah, it's an inside day. It's a rejection of lower price. That's saying the composite still wants to run up to this uh, 12, uh, 269 area. So the whole, it's going to be intriguing watching this whole thing shake out because when you, when you take a look at you know the market where we are, uh, bottom line, it's still kind of crawling and trying to get the higher price. And this dollar, you know, bottom line, uh, this is going to dictate you know exactly how far this thing can go. And and the notes and bonds. So what's also going to happen is this. I think it's is it Thursday. Let's see. One second. The Fed minutes. These are going to be good to know, folks. Okay, the Fed minutes 
Okay, the, when the, because the last Fed meeting, we're going to get those Fed minutes on, oh, it's not until, no, no, April 12th. April 12th, man. Hey, we're getting those Wednesday. That's going to be a big number. So Wednesday, we're going to get some action. That, that Fed minutes, that's going to be some action. The reason being is that when you look at, at the aspect of, you know, did the Fed have to go down, um, I mean, up on rates, just to save face because of the implosion of uh, Silicon Valley Bank as well as um, Signature Bank. So we will get more discussion uh, on those meet minutes uh, come out uh, Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great trade, folks. Look at him, folks.